you know. He's all right, but he's not my real dad, is he? You know, I mean, me and him have never hit it off. I've never had a chance, really, you know, a chance to fill my ambitions, if I've got any ambitions, like, right? either know. I don't know what they are. I've had a hard life, if that happens, compared to some guys like you. I've had a very hard life. I've always been brought up to rowing, whereas you've been brought up in the universe, I've been brought up in street fighting, you know, every night. You know what I mean? I'd like to think that I could grow up, but I mean, I wouldn't be prepared to get, like, get married, have kids, and like, every week to worry about where the money's coming from, you know what I mean? That wouldn't be me, I'd never get married. I mean, I go and do what jobs here and there, and I get paid from that way, like, I don't get... I don't have to wake up in the morning and think to myself, Christ, let's hurry, I've got to go to work, you know what I mean? You know? Just as long as I've got enough money to go and see me, all that does me. They're a shitty team, as it comes to respect of shitty teams, yeah, they, they've never been in the first division, they've never done nothing like that, but it's just, it's the fans, isn't it, really? It's your mates down there, you makes you rely on, and they go everywhere with you, you go all through the country with them, different clubs, and it's, you know, it's just there, it's terrific. They've never had nothing except their reputation, you know? Like, they've always got the reputation. Being a hard team, and they always will be a hard team. Do you mean a hard team, or hard supporters. supporters? Supporters, hard supporters. You know, you've got a load of nutters out there, really. They're all support. They're all nutters. Have you had much trouble with the police yourself, Billy? Been in trouble a few times, yeah. Arrested? Yes. And what happened to you when you went to court? Just get fined. You just get fined or you get put away. I won't pay me fines. I mean, I am a lot of money now, but I won't pay me fines. Do you think that fines are any kind of a deterrent to lads who get out of order at football matches? Nah, they're not. How are they a deterrent? They're not a deterrent at all, are they, really? A deterrent is uh, making the geezers miss their football on Saturday. What do you think will happen to you the next time you get into trouble with the police? I don't really give a shit about it, really. I do time. I don't mind being fine. It's easy, isn't it? You come back out and you just support me a wall. You have more punch ups and you just go back in. Oh yeah, that's that. Why do you get in so many rucks, Billy? You get um, a lot of geese taking a piss at you at football. They turn around and they they just they start shouting things that you're chanting at you, you know what I mean? And you just well, you just lose your temper. But why do you allow yourself to be provoked by the uh, uh, other teams' fans. You don't have to fight, do you? Well, what are you going to be called, a coward? You don't want people to turn around and say, what's up with him, like, you know what I mean? He's not steaming in, look at him over there, he's a coward, which does happen. Why don't uh, opposing fans come to Millwall's ground? Because they're scared. When they come down Millwall, they get battered. They get battered. Same as Tottenham would get battered when they come down in Tottenham, because they got too much mouth. Tottenham go around telling everyone they're going to do Millwall, let them, we'll let them come down and prove it. Next month's match with Tottenham is more than a London derby game. It's the only occasion on which a visiting club will bring mass support to the den. Because of Millwall's reputation, other side supporters tend to stay at home. Today, only a few courageous Blackburn Rovers fans have come to London. Some of them live to regret it. I arrived here about half past one quarter to two. We were walking down about ten of us. We were about twenty lads run down. Are you Blackburn? Automatically, yeah, we're Whiteman fans. Next thing I knew, I went up to the bloody hell there, Tom. They had me down to me. I saw me score up on four. I picked it up. There were three on the other end. So they started to hit me again. So I, I walked away automatically. So I had to go come here again. There's no way I'll be here again. I mean, United, Everton, City, Liverpool, everywhere around. But not, not walking down the ground at half past one and being jumped on like that. That is pathetic, is that? The crowd for the Blackburn match was less than 6,000, and the club lost much-needed gate money. Whatever happens when Tottenham come down, low attendance won't be a worry. This is the Colgo Lane End, Millwall's home terrace. On past experience, it's where Tottenham's fans will make their first assault. Although today, with little at stake, it's sparsely populated, it will be well guarded for the Tottenham game. Gangs like Treatment will be there in strength to defend their traditional territory. 
many parents brought their kids down. Even my brother took me down to Millwall and the entrance we went in and where we stood is where we stood and that is under the Coldblow Lane end. If Tottenham are ejected from the Coldblow Lane end, they may well be moved to what passes for a visitor's terrace at Millwall, the Ilderton Road end. Here, however, they'll encounter Millwall's nutcases like F Troop, who will be standing there for that precise purpose. If you're a visiting supporter, there's no safe standing room in the lion's den. Even the side terrace, which in most grounds is a neutralized zone, is guarded by the halfway line, the novices who make up in numbers for what they lack in strength. Where do you stand on the terraces? Halfway line. Halfway line. Oh, that's the best thing. Like top will oh, come in, I reckon they're going to take her in. They come up to us, but then we'll just go up and go into them. Gary Roberts is 16, a former halfway liner. He's just graduated to treatment. Although still at school, Gary prefers to spend his time with his best friend, Nick Harris. At 27, Mick is one of Treatment's oldest members. He works as a caretaker for an experimental playgroup and is surprisingly good with children. What's that? That's a watering can. Where does the watering can go? Which one's got the watering can? You've got the watering can there, haven't you? When we come back from Coventry, we had a rack at um, some pancakes with Bolton one of the And we, as I stood there and rapped with him, he said, we, any man who would stand there and rap, can go to um, start dancing with us and it's great. Ever since I'm a gay man with him, and he's a great brother. I know he should be going to school, but it's just his way. If you've got a bit of a wild temper and no one's supporting you, you're just going to fling out, fist and feet, right, and just walk out, which he's been doing. And then he just comes down here for company, like, you know, he just comes down here because he knows me. Nick and Gary are also bound together by their allegiance to treatment and can recite the gang's code of conduct. When police are knocking about, you don't sort of steam in and do something silly where they can have you. You use the loaf and when it's clear and they, you know there's going to be trouble, you've got to be there. And as I say, to be a, a sort of a treatment member, you've just got to sort of stay there and stay your own pitch. If there's going to be a rut, you stay there. And then that's only a, a certain few that travel away. Yes, 50 of us went to Sunderland a couple of weeks back and uh, that's what you call a treatment mob. Gary, you're in treatment now, aren't you? Yes. Did you have to prove yourself before you were able to join the gang? Well, I stood, stood down, rushing with me, we'll stay there, and if we were that number like 20 at one, we had to stay there and fight like, you know what I mean? And all that night. Huh? So you proved that you were a good rucker? Well, I wouldn't say I'm a good rucker, but I wouldn't run. I'd stay there and fight and help him out. Is he good, uh, Nick? Yeah, any blokes, any blokes that don't run and you're away from home and stand there and have a good fight is a good Mill supporter. But is and that really what football's about? We know it's not about fighting, but the thing is, when as you, as you go up to see a football match, a few just happen to be there, it's the other adults, as you're saying about me, that I'm an adult and I've got a job with kids, everything like that. It's adults fighting me as well. And I am just, just going to stand there and let them do it. So I'm, soccer hooligans are not 14, 15 year olds? No. no. I, I travelled up to Blackburn last year when so-called hooligans, 30 years old. And I still remember some of them faces that give me a hammer in at Blackburn some six, seven years ago. And they're blokes. They're not just 14, 15 year old kids. It's blokes as well. So anyone who goes on the terraces has got to be prepared for trouble? Of course they are. It all depends where they stand on the terracing. If they like to stand on the terracing but somewhere else. But no matter where you stand, you're going to get trouble because as soon as you shout out, for instance, if you're way up Sunderland and a mill will score a goal, you shout out, mill wall light and one up, you get people having a go at you, in rubbish and all that game. And that's what you get. And people just don't stand for that. Mick, when are you going to outgrow football and Millwall? When are you going to settle down and get married? Settle down and get married?